We are hearing what jail guards say KC said when she learned a body had been found. That was back on December 11th when those remains were found near her East Orange County home. Those remains were later identified as her daughter Kaylee's. We have live team coverage beginning with Mike DeForest with the interviews from those jail officers. Mike. Jackie, Casey's attorney Jose Baez does not want you to hear from these corrections officers. In a motion filed a few weeks ago, he asked a judge to block the release of these interviews. Prosecutors were waiting on a judge's ruling before making Making those audio recordings public. However, in an email sent out just a little while ago, the state attorney's office acknowledges they inadvertently included those interviews among some other evidence released today. After placing her under restraints, we escorted her to medical. According to Orange County Corrections Sergeant Billy Richardson, Casey Anthony had been listening to a radio in her jail cell and was aware a child's body had just been found near her parents' home. But when they brought her to the jail's medical unit, where a TV showed live coverage of the discovery, Casey broke down. She had signs of hyperventilation with heavy, deep breathing that was uh, taking place. She uh, then bent over and made complaints that she was feeling sick to her stomach and was going to throw up. Her hands started turning red. She started getting red blotchy palms. Um, at one point she did have me look at her hands and I felt them and they were kind of warm, sweaty, um, clammy kind of feeling. According to Lieutenant Tammy Unser, a jail mental health worker finally said that Casey had had enough and ushered her into a conference room. She's like, no, no, I won't hurt myself. But she did ask for a sedative, which we did relay to the doctor. Lieutenant Unser claims Casey then abruptly changed the subject, talking about the college football national championship game. Touchdown, Nelson! Meanwhile, Jose Baez was making his way into the jail, where he met with Casey in the conference room. He told her what he thought and what had occurred. Um, she did break down and cry in there. We could see that she was crying. He asked for tissue. Have you ever seen her react that way before? No. So that's the first time she's ever reacted so strongly to anything. Yeah. Jose Baez has not yet commented on the accidental release of those audio recordings. He's also trying to prevent jail surveillance video from being made public, which reportedly shows everything those corrections officers are talking about. Jackie? Mike, why is Jose Baez so concerned about what the corrections officers saw? Couldn't he just argue that that's naturally Casey's reaction to her daughter's death? That's exactly what he is saying, Casey, that this was a mother who had just found out about her daughter being killed, basically. But Baez calls the whole ordeal cruel. He says those attorney, those interviews there violate attorney-client privilege as well as Casey's medical privacy rights. Jackie? It's a video that a lot of people wanted to see. Mike, thank you. Now to what could be a boost to the defense and the massive amount of information made public today. Investigative reporter Tony Pipitone has been covering that part of today's developments. Tony. You notice Jose Baez has been very interested in what the detective, the, the deputy who went out to set that body scene in August saw. And you'll remember four months before Kaylee's body was found, deputies were called to that same scene by the same meter reader who would find the body in December. And what one of those deputies swore was the truth about that August call is now being contradicted by the deputy himself. On December 18th, one week after Kaylee's remains were found, partly inside a plastic trash bag, Deputy Richard Kane was placed under oath and asked about the day four months earlier when meter reader Roy Cronk reported a plastic trash bag containing bones in those same woods. When I reached down, lifted the bag up, it was pretty heavy, but when I lifted it up, it tore, you know, the bottom, all leaves fell out, some sticks. And he said Kronk was close enough to confirm that was the bag Kronk was concerned about. I said, yeah, that one right there. That's, that's the one I grabbed. But six hours after giving that statement, Kane reversed himself in a big way. Interviewed again, under oath by detectives, Kane changed his story. Okay, what I'm asking you is, did that happen? Did you pick a bag up? Not a bag. Okay. It was... Did you pick anything up? Just the, the yard waste. Kane now swore he never touched any bag. And he also changed his story about how close Kronk was to him when he inspected the area. So he's not standing near you? No. He's standing up by the road? Up by the roadway, right, right at the entrance to a pathway. Okay. So he didn't walk the downhill with you? No. I asked a defense spokeswoman what they thought about Deputy Kane's contradictions, and she said there would be no comment on how his story 
quote, changed dramatically, end quote, over six hours because depositions are ongoing. But clearly, if they can raise doubt about whether a deputy is lying and whether there was a body in those woods back in August, well, it could raise doubts about whether Casey could have dumped that body because she was, of course, in jail. So, Tony, what is the sheriff's office doing about Deputy Kane? Well, he has been removed. He's under internal investigation, and he has had his badge and gun taken in January. He's assigned now to the supply division. Okay. Thanks, Tony. All right. Our team coverage on these newly released tapes continues with Adam Longa with new video of Casey's interrogation. The day a grand jury indicted her for murder, Adam in the tapes, Casey Fields detectives had it in for her since day one. Yeah, Jackie, that video was taken on October 14th, almost three months after Casey Anthony was first arrested on child neglect charges. And Casey says she was not surprised at all by the grand jury's indictment. Just a random question. Um, sure. Are there cameras in all of the rooms? I or have just no some freaking clue. I've yeah. never been in this part of the building. So From the minute she sat down at the sheriff's yeah. office, Casey Anthony knew she was being recorded. Do you understand what you were arrested for today? Yes. Okay. Investigators are trying to get all they can out of Casey. This is video from the day she was indicted on charges of first-degree murder, a day she apparently knew was coming. Are you anxious about today at all? Um, I have been. I mean, this is something, honestly, we've been preparing for from the beginning just because of words that were directly spoken from Yuri Melich and also from uh, Sergeant Allen. They were saying that this is what they were planning on doing from the very beginning, from that first day. So they wrote me off within the first couple hours. In talking to investigators, Casey makes a strong case for her innocence, saying she knows Kaylee is alive, even though the state's evidence shows Kaylee at that time in October was already dead. I still have that feeling, that presence. I know that she's alive. Whether you have a bucket load of evidence downstairs that contradicts that and says otherwise, or all you have is speculation. Or, or nothing at all. And we have more than speculation. As every tip and, and that's every lead to follow up. Directly. Yeah. That we have more than speculation. We have a lot. Or else we wouldn't be to this point. Mm -hmm. A lot. And Adam, there was also a point in that interview when Casey says she's open to talking with investigators, but why didn't that happen? Yeah, she says that a couple times during uh, the almost two-hour uh, uh, interrogation there, Jackie. What happened was her lawyer, Jose Baez, arrived, and Casey said, I'm ready to answer questions. They went into another room. They spoke privately. They came back into the room. Jose Baez said there was going to be no question and answer session. So the easy answer to your question, Jackie, is we don't know why there wasn't a question and answer session that day. No, but things changed abruptly. All right, yes. Adam. Adam, thank you. We are still uncovering new information in the case against Casey on Local 6 and ClickOrlando.com. Tonight, after the game, join us for a Local 6 exclusive. We're going one-on-one -on -one with George Anthony. You'll hear him talk candidly about Casey, her defense team, and how he and wife Cindy want Kaylee to be remembered.